Hello, welcome to Merrimack STEM Academy. Today, we're going to talk about gas laws, specifically Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and the Combined Gas Law. It's important to understand these laws in order to understand the behavior of gases. So without further ado, let's get into it. These gas laws involve volume, pressure, and temperature, so we're going to start by defining these terms. Volume is the size of the container, and it's commonly measured in liters or milliliters. Temperature is commonly measured in Celsius or Fahrenheit, but for these gas laws, we must convert temperature into Kelvin. Also, temperature affects kinetic energy, which affects a particle's velocity. That means that molecules will move faster at higher temperatures than at lower temperatures. Finally, pressure. Pressure is the force exerted on the walls of the container by the gas. Pressure can have lots of different units, such as atmospheres, pascals, millimeters mercury, and tor. Now that we understand volume, temperature, and pressure, let's talk about our first gas law, Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law relates pressure and volume. This law states that a gas's pressure times its volume equals K, which is a constant. However, the more useful version of this equation says that the initial pressure times the initial volume equals the final pressure times the final volume. Say we have a one liter container filled with gas. The pressure is 200 millimeters mercury. Now we double the size of the container, so it's two liters. What is the pressure? We can use Boyle's law to figure it out. First, we plug all the values into the equation. The initial pressure is 200 millimeters mercury, and the initial volume is one liter. The final volume is two liters, and we don't know the final pressure. With some simple algebra, we can rearrange this equation and solve for the final pressure, which is 100 millimeters mercury. Notice that we're doubling the volume from one liter to two liters. As a result, the pressure is cut in half. Boyle's law tells us that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. As one increases, the other decreases. To show this relationship between pressure and volume, we're going to make a graph showing the pressure of this gas in different sized containers. We already know the pressure in a one liter container and in a two liter container. Using Boyle's law, we can figure out the pressure of a three liter container, which is about 67 millimeters mercury, and in a four liter container, which is about 50 millimeters mercury. When we plot these points on the graph, we can see the inversely proportional relationship between pressure and volume. Charles Law involves volume and temperature. Charles Law says that volume divided by temperature equals the constant K. Like Boyle's Law, this equation has a more commonly used form. The initial volume divided by the initial temperature equals the final volume divided by the final temperature. Here's an example to explain Charles' law. Say we have a balloon filled with helium gas. The volume is one liter. The temperature is 300 Kelvin, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're going to move the balloon to a freezer that's about 250 Kelvin. Remember, we have to use Kelvin for gas laws because otherwise the temperature could be negative, which wouldn't work with the equation. So what's the volume of the balloon now? We can plug the values we know into the equation and solve for the final volume. The volume of the balloon in the freezer is about 0.83 liters. In this scenario, we decrease the temperature and the volume decreased as well. At lower temperatures, gas molecules will have less kinetic energy and move closer together. Temperature and volume are directly proportional, so as one decreases, the other decreases as well, and when one increases, the other will also increase. Just like we did with Boyle's Law, we're going to make a graph of Charles' Law so we can see how temperature affects volume. We already know the volume of the balloon at two temperatures. We can solve for the volume at more temperatures using Charles' Law. When we plot the points on a graph, we can see that this is a straight line, which is what we would expect. Every time we increase the temperature by a certain amount, the volume will increase by a certain amount as well. All right, the next gas law is Gay-Lussac's law, which involves pressure and temperature. It says that pressure divided by temperature equals a constant, or the initial pressure divided by the initial temperature equals the final pressure divided by the final temperature. 
You know the drill. It's example time. Say a closed container of a gas has a pressure of 1 atmosphere when the temperature is 300 Kelvin. We're going to heat the container to 400 Kelvin. What's the pressure now? To solve for the final pressure, we need to plug all our known values into the equation. Some quick rearranging of the equation tells us that the pressure at 400 Kelvin is 1.33 atmospheres. This makes sense because at a lower temperature, the molecules will move slower and hit the walls of the container with less force. Hence, the pressure is lower. At a high temperature, the molecules move faster, hitting the walls of the container more often and with more force, so the pressure is greater. We increase the temperature of the gas, and the pressure increases as well. Temperature and pressure are directly proportional. Graph time! Temperature in Kelvin is on the x-axis, and pressure in atmospheres is on the y-axis. Using Gay-Lussac's law, we can solve for the pressure at 100 and 200 Kelvin. Now that we have a couple points, we can put them on the graph. You may notice this graph looks pretty similar to the graph for Charles' law. This is because Gay-Lussac's law and Charles' law both involve directly proportional properties. We've talked about the three fundamental gas laws. Now, it's time to put them all together to create the combined gas law. As its name suggests, it combines the other three gas laws. The combined gas law includes pressure, volume, and temperature. Looking at this law, you can see how it combines Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's law. Before I make you do all the work and solve some practice problems, let's review what we've talked about. Boyle's law relates pressure and volume. Here's the equation. Pressure and volume are indirectly proportional. When one increases, the other decreases. Charles' law relates volume and temperature. Volume and temperature are directly proportional. When one increases, the other increases, and when one decreases, the other decreases as well. Gay-Lussac's law involves pressure and temperature, which are also directly proportional. And last but not least, the combined gas law, which includes pressure, volume, and temperature. The relationships between all three are more complicated, and it's easier to look at the relationships between two of these properties while keeping the third constant. Okay, it's question time. Each question needs to be solved using one of the four gas laws we've talked about today. They start easier and get harder as they go on. Pause the video here, figure out as much as you can, and then we'll go over the solutions. For the first question, we're given volume and pressure, and told to find the final pressure. This tells us that we're going to need Boyle's law. The initial volume is 2.3 liters, and the initial pressure is 610 millimeters mercury. The final volume is 6.1 liters, and we need to solve for the pressure. This is just like the example problems from earlier. We plug our values into the equation and solve, giving us a pressure of 230 millimeters mercury. Here, we're given pressure, volume, and temperature. The volume and temperature are changing, and we need to solve for the new pressure. The initial pressure is 5.1 atmospheres. The initial volume is 220 milliliters, and the final volume is 390 millimeters. The initial temperature is 470 Kelvin, and the final temperature is 230 Kelvin. Since pressure, volume, and temperature are involved, we're going to need the combined gas law. Once we know the value of each part of the equation, we can just plug in our values and solve. The pressure is now 1.41 atmospheres. Question 3. We're looking at volume and temperature. The initial temperature is 275 Kelvin, and we need to solve for the final temperature. Here, things start to get a little more tricky. We're not given the exact volume values, but we are told that the volume is doubling. So, I'm going to call the initial volume x and the final volume twice the initial volume, which is 2x. These x values are going to cancel out in our equation. If you're not a fan of solving the problem this way, you could also make up values for the volumes. For example, you could say that the initial volume is 1 liter and the final volume is 2 liters. Either way works. Volume and temperature means we're going to need Charles' law here. When we get the final temperature, T2, alone on one side, 
we end up with 2x in the numerator of the fraction and x in the denominator. So we can cancel out the x values. Now that we only have one variable, we can do a quick calculation. The new temperature of the container is 550 Kelvin. Last question. We're looking at pressure and temperature here. The initial pressure is 2.7 atmospheres and the final pressure is 4.9 atmospheres. We're told the temperature is increased by 23 Kelvin, but we're not given the initial and final temperatures. Like last time, to solve this, we're going to need to create a mathematical statement to represent the initial and final temperature. We're solving for the initial temperature, so I'm going to call that x. The final temperature is the initial temperature plus 23 Kelvin, so T2 equals x plus 23. Pressure and temperature means we're using Gay-Lussac's law. I'm going to start by plugging in everything we know. Our goal is to end up with an x equals something statement. So next, I'm going to get the x's on one side. Now I'm going to break up this fraction so we have x over x plus 23 over x. Well, x divided by x is 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 from each side and then do a little rearranging so x is alone on the left side of the equation. At last, our solution, the initial temperature is about 28.4 Kelvin. Side note, 28.4 Kelvin is extremely cold, about negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so this situation would never occur in normal everyday life. Let's double check our math to make sure we're right. We know the initial temperature, and we can add 23 Kelvin to figure out the final temperature. The initial pressure divided by the initial temperature should equal the final pressure divided by the final temperature. When we solve this, each side of the equation equals about 0 0.091, so our solution works. You did it! Thank you for listening, comment your questions about gas laws, and any ideas for video topics. Please like this video, and as always, subscribe for more videos about chemistry, biology, and everything STEM related.